Hey, it's Liz from Coffee Powered Home. Today, I'm going to walk you through a few sublimation basics for those of you who are new um, or want to learn more about sublimation. Also, I'm going to show you guys the steps um, that I use to sublimate a t-shirt. Today, we are using AJ Blanks to create this uh, beautiful, colorful, uh, sublimated t-shirt. There are chapters down in the description in case you need to jump ahead. Uh, let's do it. So real quick uh, overview of sublimation is basically a design is printed onto um, transfer paper using sublimation ink. Then the design is pressed onto either a t-shirt or whatever item you're trying to sublimate. When that heat is applied, there's a specific temperature that once it reaches that temperature, um, the ink takes gas form and then it permanently is infused or dyes whatever you are sublimating, whether it's a t-shirt or again, whatever other item you are sublimating. Once an item has been sublimated, if it's been done correctly on the correct item, it is permanent, washable, um, and you don't really have to worry about that coming off. It's like infused basically into the item. It is not sitting on top. It's part of the shirt for the life of the shirt, which is amazing. But there's a couple limitations to that. So sublimation ink is translucent. So basically it's not gonna show up on a darker shirt. So if you took this design um, and you pressed it onto a black shirt, it's not going to show just in the same way as like watercolors would not show up on dark paper and hair dye would not show up like on my dark hair. It doesn't work that way. There's no white base to it. So sublimation designs work best on lighter colored shirts and substrates, which are just things that you can sublimate basically. Another very important thing to keep in mind is that sublimation ink will only permanently adhere to polyester fabric. Um, and the items that have a special poly coating that are made for sublimation. The higher the polyester count in your shirt, the better, because it's going to retain the most amount of color. So if you want your designs to pop, to be really bright and vibrant, use as close to 100% polyester as you can. Today we are using AJ Blanks. They just came out with their polyester sublimation blanks. So we're going to use those. They are 100% polyester because for my business, I like them colors to pop. So again, you want to use a lighter colored shirt with a high polyester count to get a really good vibrant result. Those are the pretty much the only limitations to an otherwise very magical and amazing process called sublimation. Are there ways to get around those limitations? Yes, but again, this is a crash course. We're not here to talk about bleaching and indirect sublimation. That's for another day. So let's move on to the actual um, supplies and the process. Supplies that you're gonna need for sublimation. First of all, you're going to need your sublimation transfer, whether you purchased it or printed it yourself using a sublimation printer with sublimation ink. Keep in mind that your design should be mirrored and the colors are always going to look a little bit different on the transfer before you press it. So keep that in mind. It's going to look a little bit dull. Um, some of your blues and greens might be a little bit off. Once you press it, the heat activates the colors and they change drastic, but that's that's normal. Now, if after you press, the result on the shirt isn't what you had in mind color-wise, then you might want to go in and maybe tweak your color settings a little bit, but test it first to see what the actual result is. So don't go based off of just the color that you see on the transfer. You're obviously going to need your sublimation blank or substrate, which is basically the t-shirt or the item that you are sublimating onto. Again, today we are using AJ Blanks, which are um, a really good quality polyester, 100% polyester shirt with a nice cotton feel. They're not super thin like some of them are. So um, this is what I'm going to be using. You're also going to need a heat source. You want to make sure that you have a heat source that gets all the way up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I know some people use a Cricut press. In my opinion, it's better if you could use a heat press just because it's going to be more stable. If you use a Cricut press or something smaller, you can still sublimate, but you got to be careful not to move it during that process or you can cause ghosting um, and shadows and things if your design shifts during that process. Another very important thing that you're going to want is butcher paper or unwaxed parchment paper. And that is going to be to prevent the sublimation ink from going all the way through your shirt to the back of the shirt and also to protect your heat source. Because again, when the ink becomes gas, it can get adhered to your heat press and then inadvertently transfer onto the next item that you press. Another item that um, you should have on hand is heat resistant tape to secure your design onto the shirt to help prevent the transfer from shifting while you're pressing it. So those are the main things that you will need. So let's do the thing. Step one for me is to set the heat press to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set the time for 60 seconds. Step two for me is to prepare the transfer. And what I mean by that is 
I like to tear the edge of the transfer sheet off. I don't cut it. I like to tear it because that way it feathers the edge out and makes it less likely that you'll get um, a press line around your transfer sheet. Um, if you don't tear it, um, sometimes there's a very noticeable edge that gets uh, left on the shirt after you press it. Step three is going to be to prep your shirt. Now, this part can be done directly at your heat press. My heat press doesn't have a pullout drawer, so I prefer to prep my shirt in my workspace and then just transfer it over to the heat press once it's ready to go. You need to cut a piece of butcher paper or unwaxed parchment paper that's going to fit inside the shirt. That prevents the sublimation gas from going all the way through to the back of the shirt. Lint rolling is a very crucial step in prepping your shirt. This is key. You must lint roll really, really well to prevent your shirt from getting little blue and red specks that end up permanently staining the shirt. Even if you don't see any lint, it's there. Make sure you lint roll. And when you think you've lint rolled enough, lint roll one more time. Not just the area where the design is gonna go. Make sure you lint roll the entire surface of the shirt that's gonna be under heat. So step four is to go ahead and place your sublimation transfer face down onto the shirt that has been thoroughly prepped and lint rolled. Now, many people make the mistake of putting it on upside down, so make sure you get a good look at it, hold it up to the light to make sure you've got it the right direction, and then go ahead and take a couple pieces of heat resistant tape to make sure that that design doesn't move. But especially if you're not using a heat press, if you're gonna use like a Cricut press or something like that, make sure you have secured the design really, really well so it doesn't shift during the press. All right, if you've prepped at your workspace, now is the time to transfer that over to your heat press. Um, if you did all of this here at your heat press, then it's time to cover all of it with one more layer of butcher paper to protect your heat press from getting stained from the sublimation ink. So that's called blowout paper is what it's known as. Um, that's just to make sure that you protect the expensive equipment. Once you've covered everything with another layer of butcher paper, go ahead and press at 400 degrees Fahrenheit um, for 60 seconds. Once the shirt is done pressing, um, some people like to let it cool down. I personally like to rip that sucker off like a Band-Aid. So I remove that top layer of butcher paper and then carefully, because it's hot, get in there and rip off that transfer sheet and your shirt is good to go. And here's the final result. It looks so different to that dull transfer sheet that I showed you guys before. Once the heat is applied, those colors just pop, especially on a 100% polyester shirt. Um, once again, these are AJ Blank sublimation shirts that they just released. These are great, get you some. So once again, that's the result of a good quality blank, a good quality transfer. And hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, um, you can post it in the comments or hit me up on Instagram. Um, all that information is down in the description. Um, I'm no expert in this, but I'm sharing what has worked for me. And hopefully y'all have a good experience on your sublimation journey. Y'all have a good day.